Hello, Towson faculty. Have you ever considered exploring games to support how you engage your students both inside and outside your classroom? Well, according to Sugar and Whitcomb and other scholars in the field of gaming, games can provide valuable feedback to both learners and instructors, motivate learners, improve teamwork, and offer choices to help encourage student autonomy. As a matter of fact, James Paul G. stated that good games have qualities like interaction, sequence problems, challenges, relevance, customization, and they value performance before competence. These are all qualities that can increase engagement in your classroom. Now, there are a number of ways that you can begin to incorporate games into your class. As a first step, you can start by integrating elements of digital and non-digital games, which would lay the groundwork for and help you become more comfortable in a game-based learning environment. Now, there's also gamification, which simply means including game elements and mechanics at a more extensive level. Now, this doesn't mean turning your entire class into a game, but you could consider awarding points, completion achievements, and learning challenges all for the purpose of accomplishing your main goal, which is to engage students more in the learning process. Of course, there are a number of pre-existing games that you could adapt to create a game-based learning environment, and it would be up to you to decide what type of game is most relevant to your course content, illustrates the content, and that you're most comfortable playing. Nearly any existing game that you're familiar with can be adapted for a classroom. For example, board games, card games, quiz games, role play scenarios, and digital games, including a number of commercial, ready off the shelf games and apps on your phone. Now, this episode, we have a faculty expert with us to share some more about her experiences using game strategy in her courses. So now I'll turn it over to Towson University's Professor Jessica Stansbury. Gaming in the classroom is incorporating games. They can be digital games, they can be non-digital games, into any type of lesson that you have planned for the day inside the classroom. Game-based learning is a little bit more broad and game-based learning deals with um, learning through games. So not the game itself, but just being able to structure the curriculum around games. They enjoy it, it's fun allows me to interact with my students on a different level and really kind of get to know my students a little better because they're nervous about this assignment because it's new and it's different and it allows me to have more fun in the classroom as an instructor. Some games that I've used in the classroom are The Sims, which is a computer game. Uh, Most students are familiar with The Sims and I've used it to teach the self-concept. So in The Sims, you're using an avatar. You create an avatar, which is this alternate identity, and then they can play. They have to build a life, uh, maintain a family, pay bills, and it gives them a chance to explore the self-concept and what self-concept really is through this alternate identity. There are tons of non-digital games that can be integrated into the classroom as well. Uh, One easy way that I like to integrate non-digital games is to have my students create their own games. So a way to review concepts in the course before an exam, for example. Uh, I will have them create their games. Won't let them use Jeopardy, but they could create like Family Feud or I've had people create Smash the Buzzer where they have to answer a question and run to the front of the classroom and hit a game buzzer in order to get the correct answer. And it really gets them engaged and involved in the classroom without needing to use technology. Games promote engagement in the classroom. They promote uh, social interaction in the classroom, which the more social interaction you tend to have, the more engagement you have. Students like to play games. So there's a ton of research in K through 12 where we use games all the time, and then we get to higher education, and for some reason we stop playing games. Uh, Students are engaged in things that are not uh, traditional in the fact where they're interacting with you instead of just listening, so they become creators of the information, which helps them apply critical thinking skills. Wow, thanks Professor Stansbury. As you can see, effectively designed games certainly have the potential to support engagement, collaboration, assessment, and most importantly, active learning in your classes. Now, if you'd like to create your own games for your classes, Steve Sugar and Jennifer Whitcomb have provided some suggestions for the development process. First, you should choose a game that fits with your curriculum. The game's format and purpose should support your learning objectives. 
You should also consider the class time needed in other logistics, and especially if all of your students will have the abilities needed to play your game. Ensure that you consider the variability of student learning styles, specifically students that might require alternative means of access. Second, you can begin to identify the resources that you'll need. Will you need computers, pens and markers, coins, dice, posters, or game pieces? All of these you should know. At this point, you'll also need to define the rules of your game and create the instructions. The most effective rules and instructions are generally as brief and simple as possible. Finally, you'll put the game into practice, quite literally. Have a practice round with your class where you let the students know that it's your first time trying out a new game and you might need to work out a few hitches. After your first run, you'll want to debrief your students to find out what they liked and what they didn't like, if prizes enhanced the outcomes or interest in the game, and then modify your game accordingly. It's always a good rule of thumb to regard your game as a fluid product. It should always be adjustable and accommodating and might be slightly different every time you play. Keeping this process in mind, anybody's capable of creating a game that's fun, experiential, challenging, engaging, and valuable to all involved parties. To learn more about games in higher education, including more details on how to create your own, please follow the links below the video in the description. And of course, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like or follow OAI on Twitter and Facebook for announcements about our upcoming teaching tip videos.